Hello, and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2022. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering Second Chronicles 34 through 36 and John 19, 1 through 22. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation in a smooth reading of your word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said amen. Josiah's Reform Second Chronicles 34 Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem thirty-one years he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and followed the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or to the left. In the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father David. In his twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of high places, asher poles, and idols. Under his direction, the altars of the ballast were torn down. He cut to pieces the incense altars that were above them and smashed the asher poles and the idols. These he broke to pieces and scattered over the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He burned the bones of the priests on their altars, and so he purged Judea and Jerusalem in the towns of Manasseh Ephraim and Simon, as far as Nephetali, and in the ruins around them, he tore down the altars and the asher poles, and crushed the idols to powder, and he cut to pieces all the incense altars throughout Israel. Then he went back to Jerusalem. In the eighteenth year of Josiah's reign, to purify the land, and the temple, he sent Shephan, son of Azelah, and Mes Messiah, the ruler of the city, with Joah, son of Jehoza, the recorder, to repair the temple of the Lord his God. And they went to Hekekiah the high priest, and gave him the money that had been brought into the temple of God, which the Levites were, who were the gatekeepers, had collected from the people of Manash, Ephraim, and the entire remnant of Israel, and from all the people of Judea and Benjamin, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Then they entrusted it to the man appointed to supervise the work on the Lord's temple. These men paid the workers who required, repaired the and restored the temple. They also gave money to the carpenters, the builders, the purchasers, dressed uh, to purchase the dressed stones and timber, forged joists and beams for the buildings that the kings of Judea had allowed to fall into ruin. The workers labored faithfully over them to direct them were jo uh, Joash and Obadiah, Levites descended from Meriah, and Zechariah and Mishalom, descendants from Kohath, the Levites. And the Levites all who were skilled in playing musical instruments had charge of the laborers and supervised all the workers from job to job. Some of the Levites were secretaries, scribes, and gatekeepers. The book of the law found. While they were bringing out the money that had been taken into the temple of the Lord, Hekekiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord that had been given through Moses. Hekekiah said to Shephan, the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. He gave it to Shephan. Then Shephan took the book to the king 
and reported to him. Your officials are doing everything that has been committed to them. They have paid out the money that was in the temple of the Lord and have entrusted it to the supervisors and workers. Then Shephan, the secretary, informed the king, Hekekiah the priest, has given me a book, and Shephan read from it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the law, he tore his robes. He gave these orders to Hekekiah, Achim, son of Shephan, Abaddon, and a uh, son of Mecca, Shephan, the secretary, and Isaiah, the king's attendant. Go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the remnant of Israel and Judea about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that is poured out on us because those who have gone before us have not kept the words of the Lord. They have not uh, acted in accordance with all that is written in this book. Hekekiah and those the king had sent with him went to speak to the prophet Huladah, who was the wife of Shulamah, son of Tekaharth, and the son of Hesherah, keeper of the wardrobe. She lived in Jerusalem in the new quarter. She said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Tell the man who sent you to me. This is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this place and its people. All the curses written in the book that has been read in the presence of the king of Judea because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods and aroused my anger by all that their hands have made. My anger will be poured out on this place and will not be quenched. Tell the king of Judea who sent you to inquire of the Lord this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the words you heard, because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself before God when you heard what he spoke against this place and its people, and because you humbled yourself before me and tore your robes and went uh, wept in my presence, I have heard you, declares the Lord. Now I will gather you to your ancestors, and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster I am going to bring on this place and on those who live here. And so they took her answer back to the king. Then the king called together, all the elders of Judea and Jerusalem. And he went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judea, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and Levites, all the people from the least to the greatest. He read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the temple of the Lord. The king stood by his pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord and keep his commands, statutes, and decrees with all his heart and all his soul and to obey the words of the covenant written in this book. And then he had everyone in Jerusalem, the Benjamin pledge themselves to it and the people of Jerusalem did this as accordance with their covenant with God the God of their ancestors then 
he had everyone in Jerusalem and Benjamin pledge themselves to it. <clears throat> the people of Jerusalem did this in accordance with the covenant of God, the God of their ancestors. Josiah removed all the detestable idols from all the territory belonging to the Israelites, and he had all who were present in Israel serve the Lord their God. As long as he lived, they did not fail to follow the Lord, the God of their ancestors. Josiah celebrates Passover. Second Chronicles 35 Josiah celebrated the Passover to the Lord in Jerusalem, and the Passover lamb was slaughtered on the fourteenth day of the first month. He appointed the priests to their duties and encouraged them in the service of the Lord's temple. He also, he said, to the Levites who instructed all Israel and who had been consecrated to the Lord, put put the sacred ark in the temple that Solomon's son of David, king of Israel, built. It is not to be carried about on your shoulders. Now serve the Lord your God and his people Israel. Prepare yourselves for families by families in your divisions according to the instructions written by David, king of Israel, and by his son Solomon. Stand in the holy place with a group of Levites for each subdivision of the families of your fellow Israelites. The lay people slaughtered the Passover lamb, cons- consecrating them yourselves, and prepare the lamb for your fellow Israelites. Doing what is Okay, stand in the... Prepare yourselves by family in your divisions according to the instructions written by David, king of Israel, and his son Solomon. Stand in the holy place with a group of Levites for each subdivision of the families of your fellow Israelites. The lay people slaughtered the Passover lamb, consecrated yourselves, and prepared the lambs for your fellow Israelites, doing what the Lord commanded through Moses. Josiah provided provided for all the lay people who were there, a total of 30,000 lambs and goats for the Passover offerings, and also 3,000 cattle of all from the king's own possession. (laughs) Now, his Officials also contributed voluntarily to the people, and the priests and Levites, Hekekiah, Zechariah, and Jehiel, the office, uh, officials in charge of God's temple, gave the priests 2,600 Passover offerings and 300 cattle. Also, Kananiah, along with Shimeiah and Nathaniel, his brothers, and Hashabiah, Jale, and uh, Josabad, the leaders of the Levites, provided 5,000 Passover offerings and 500 head of cattle for the Levites. The service was arranged, and the priests stood in their places with the Levites in their divisions as the king had ordered. The Passover lambs were slaughtered, and the priests splashed against the altar the blood handed to them with the Levites skin, uh, while the Levites skinned the animals. They set aside the burnt offerings to give them to the subdivisions of families of the people uh, to offer to the Lord as it is written in the book of Moses. 
They did the same with the cattle. They roasted the Passover animals over the fire as prescribed, and they boiled the holy offerings in pots, cauldrons, and pans, and served them quickly to all the people. After this, they made preparation for themselves and for the priests, because the priests, the descendants of Aaron, were sacrificing the burnt offerings and the fat portions until nightfall, and so the Levites made preparation for themselves and for the Aaronic priests. The musicians, the descendants of Asaph, were in the place, uh, places prescribed by David, Asaph, Haman, and Juduthan, the king's seer, the gatekeepers at each gate did not need to leave their posts because their fellow Israelites made the preparations for them. Now so, as uh, at the time, the entire service of the Lord was carried out for the celebration of the Passover and the offerings of burnt offerings on the altar of the Lord as king, Josiah had ordered the Israelites who prepared were present, celebrated the Passover at that time, and observed the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. The Passover had not been observed like this in Israel since the days of prophet Samuel, and none of the kings of Israel had ever celebrated such a Passover as did Josiah and with the priests, the Levites, and all Judea and Israel, who were there with the people of Jerusalem. This Passover was celebrated in the 18th year of Josiah's reign, the death of Josiah. After all this, when Josiah had set the temple in order, Necho, king of Egypt, went up to fight at uh, Cherishemish on the Euphrates, and Josiah marched out to meet him in battle. But Necho sent messengers to him, saying, What quarrel is there, king of Judea, between you and me? It is not you I am attacking at this time, but the house with which I am at war. God has told me to hurry, so stop opposing God, who is with me, or he will destroy you. Josiah, however, would not turn away from him, but disguised himself to engage him in battle. He would not listen to what Necho had said at God's command, but went to fight him on the plain of Megiddo. Megiddo. Asher's uh, archers shot King Josiah, and he told his officers, Take me away, I am badly wounded. So they took him out of his chariot, put him in his other chariot, and brought him to Jerusalem, where he died. He was buried in the tombs of his ancestors, and all Judea and Jerusalem mourned for him. Jeremiah composed letter uh, laminates for Josiah, and to this day all the male and female singers comm commemorate Josiah in the laminates. These became a tradition in Israel and are written in the laminates. The other events of Josiah's reign and his acts of devotion in accordance with what is written in the law of the Lord, all the events from beginning to end are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judea. Second Chronicles 36 And the people of the land took Jehoz, uh, Jehoahaz, son of Josiah, and made him king in Jerusalem in place of his father. Jehoahaz, king of Judea. Jehoahaz was, Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. The king of Egypt 
dethroned him in Jerusalem and imposed on Judea a levy of hundreds of a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. The king of Egypt made Alakrim a brother of Jehoshaphat, king over Judea and Jerusalem, and changed Alakrim's name to Jehokiah. But Micha took Alakim's brother Jehoahaz and carried off him off to Egypt. Jehokim, king of Judea. Jehokim was twenty five years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem eleven years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord his God. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, attacked him and bound him with the bronze shekels to take him to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also took to Babylon articles from the temple of the Lord, and he put them in his temple there. The other events of Jehoiakim's reign, the detestable things that he did, and all that was found against him, are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judea. And Jehoshaphat, his son, succeeded him as king. Jehoshaphat, king of Judea. Jehoshaphat was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months and ten days. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord in the spring king in the spring, King Nebuchadnezzar sent for him and brought him to Babylon, together with the articles of value from the temple of the Lord, and he made Je- Jehoshaphat's uncle Zedekiah king over Judea and Jerusalem. Zedekiah king of Judea. Zedekiah was twenty-one years old when he he became king, and he did. Uh, he reigned in Jerusalem okay, Zedekiah king of Judea. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord his God and did not humble himself before Jeremiah the prophet who spoke the words of the Lord. He also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar who had made him king or made him take an oath in God's name. He became stiff-necked and hardened his heart and would not turn to the Lord, the God of Israel. And furthermore, all the leaders of the priests and the people became more and more unfaithful, following all the detestable practices of the nations and defiling the temples of the Lord, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. The fall of Jerusalem. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, sent word to them through his messengers again and again, because he had pity on the people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked God, God's messengers and despised his words, and they scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord was aroused against all his people, and there was no remedy. He brought up against them the kings of Babylonians he brought okay who killed their young men with the sword in the sanctuary and did not spare young men or young women and the elderly or the infirm God gave them all into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. Now he carried off 
to Babylon all the articles from the temple of God, both large and small, and the treasuries of the Lord's temple and the treasuries of the king and his officers and officials. They set fire to God's temple and they broke down the walls of Jerusalem. They burned all the places and destroyed everything of value. Right there. He carried into exile to Babylon the remnant who escaped from the sword and they became servants to, to him. Okay. He carried in the exile of Babylon to remnant the land enjoyed uh, the land enjoyed its Sabbath rest. All the time of the dissolution it rested until seventy years later uh, were completed in fulfillment to the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout the realm. Sorry. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me. Okay, this is what Cyrus, king of Persia, says. The Lord of God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in Judea. Any of his people among you may go up and may the Lord their God be with them. Okay, that was Second Chronicles 34 through 36. Now we will be turning to John 19. John 19. Okay. Jesus sentenced to be crucified. John 19. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns, and they put them on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe, and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they slapped his face. Once more Pilate came out, and he said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing uh, him out to you, to let you know that I find no bias for a charge against him, no basis of a charge against him. And when Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priest and their other officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him, and you crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, We have a law, and according to that law we must die because he because, he must die because he claimed to be the Son of God. And when Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it were given, not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who 
handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. Now when Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabioth. It was the day of preparation of Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews, but they shouted, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. The crucifixion of Jesus. Go to sleep. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus, carrying his own cross. He went out to the place of the skull, which is in Aramaic, is called Gol uh, Gotham. <coughs> Go to sleep. It's called Golgoth. Well, there they crucified him and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Well, Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jewish read Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic and Latin. In the Greek, and the chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that, but that this man claimed to be king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. And that was John 19, 1 through 22, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. Tomorrow, we will be uh, starting um, Ezra 1 through 2, and uh, John 19, 23 through 42. So, we will be through with the... Uh, Chronicles, Second Chronicles, we will start as well. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word I would not be able to be your messenger of a word. And so I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said amen. I'd like to thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. I, Shenandoah Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the word of God. And as always, you know God loves you, and so do I. So come back and see us tomorrow because we'll be here, God willing, and we hope that you are.